Praise the Lord. I'm glad that years ago, our forefathers who built this church saw fit to put in a ramp. When I first set foot in this building, it was a gravel parking lot, a gravel walkway, and a cinder block to get in this front door here. So at this, they put that ramp in way before there was any laws about, you know, wheelchair accommodation. So I'm glad that they saw fit. I, I found the original blueprints for how this church was supposed to be built. There were several things that never quite made it into the building. One of which they actually put in, but then they had to cover it up. If you go outside and look at the front where all the white brick is, where in the center where the cross is, that all used to be stained glass, that old kind of purplish, different color stained glass that we used to have here. That whole section was all stained glass. And it was 110 degrees in the summertime, always where that stained glass, because that, you know, sun comes up over this way and it was shining right in there and it was so hot. So my, my guess is that's why they decided to cover it up with brick because it was a, it looked good, but man, it was hot in the sun. So I imagine it would have been pretty probably too cold in the wintertime too. So anyway, they covered that up. But then on the front, there's supposed to be a, um, what is the word I'm looking for? Huh? A canopy from the front door to where the blacktop is here. There's supposed to be a canopy so that you could pull up and guys, you could drop your wife and kids off. They could go in the front door in the freezing rain while you had to park the car and walk. Okay, there was supposed to be that, but I guess the, the terrain didn't allow for that. They had to put steps in there instead of just that canopy over there. So several things didn't quite make the cut. But anyway, it's good to have Sister Pam here. And it's good to see you here tonight. Caleb was asking me about what's up on the screen. That is piles of dirt. Just thought I'd show you about piles of dirt tonight. Ephesians chapter 6. Let's go there. And I'll explain myself as we go to the Lord in prayer. Uh, we're going to pray for dawn tonight. Uh, the Lord sent us a lady. Um, her house burnt down last night. Was it last night? Two weeks ago. Okay, I was thinking it was more recent. Um, she was living with family. And there was a lot of drugs. So what we see is God removed her from that by burning the house down. Um, her brother was she completely down and out. And her brother said, well, let's try to contact maybe a church could help you out. Well, we're Bethel. Okay, that means we're ahead of first, all the first churches. First Church of Nazarene, First Baptist, First Assembly of God, first this, first that. Bethel comes before first. So... Um, they called, she called crying, right? And so we, um, we've got her in a hotel for a few nights, gave her a Bible. Her brother said that he used to be a youth pastor. And, uh, so he knew about the sinner's prayer. She grew up in a bad family and has, does not know anything about Jesus, the Bible, God, salvation, anything. She has cancer in her brain. And so that kind of made her a little here and a little there. But we fed them. We've got them in a place for the next few nights. Um, and we prayed with them. I gave her scripture. We gave her a Bible. And I wrote down places for her to read. Psalm 23, Psalm 32, John 3. That's a start. 
And her name is Dawn. Her brother's name was Marshall. And he was sort of speaking for her because, I mean, he knew that her mind was just here and there. And uh, so God sent her over here and I told her, I said, so that you'll know there's somebody in Jefferson County that God is telling us to love you and we love you. And I said, so if nothing else, you'll know that there's some people here that love you. We don't love you because we think we're going to get something out of you. We think we're going to make you a church member. We don't love you for that reason. God sent you over here and we just love you for no reason other than God put it in our hearts to love you. So um, pray for her. I gave her scriptures about salvation and tried to lead her through the sinner's prayer. She wasn't all that great with words for whatever reason. So we'll leave it up to God on whether or not, you know, she's actually saved or not. And we'll put her in God's hands and help her in any way that we can. So we're going to pray for Dawn and Marshall and just pray for that family. I could tell just from what little bit of time they were in my office that she was probably, she and he were probably the only two out of a very evil family that actually still had a conscience. That sin still bothered them. People like that, I don't mind trying to help. But then there are people who absolutely hate God. They hate churches. They hate preachers. Giving them a Bible does no good because they're not going to read it. They're probably going to throw it away. That sounds like the family that God separated her from. So it'll be interesting on what God does. But if you did not meet her, love her anyway. Love her enough to say her name in prayer. And say, God, help Dawn. Because you would not want to be in her shoes. You would not want to be raised in a family that hated God, was full of drugs, full of violence, full of adultery. You would not want to be in that family like she was. You'd not want your house burnt down like hers was burnt down. You would not want to be addicted to what she had been addicted to. You wouldn't want cancer in your brain so that you couldn't think sometimes the way everybody else thinks. So if you would not want those things on yourself, we're supposed to love other people like we love ourselves and we would not want her to be no longer in that same position. So pray for Dawn. You may not know her, may never meet her, but she just might be in heaven standing there with a list that God gave her of all the people that prayed for her. I want my name to be on that list. Amen. Father in heaven, we pray for dawn tonight. And Lord, I understand just from the time that I spent with her and her brother in my office, what a life full of sin does to a person. And how her brother used to be in the ministry. And my heart goes out to him. Lord, I'm not angry at him. I don't consider him an enemy. I believe, Father, that he still has something right in him. And I pray, dear God, that you would make him whole again. Father, he reminds me of some other men that I know where sin has just absolutely taken its toll in their life, but they still have something that's right in them. And Father, I pray, dear God, that you would manifest that, grow it, make it right. So Father, I pray for Marshall and all the people that I know that are like him, and I pray for Dawn and all the people, Lord, that I know that are like her. And I pray, Heavenly Father, God, that you would forgive her sins, wash her 
make her clean and whole. And Lord, fix her mind so that she thinks right, thinks straight, cure her of the cancer, cure her of the meth addiction. And I pray, dear God, that if she is at her rock bottom, that you would lift her up from that point and she would know that there's still some people that love her and care about her. Lord, I would not want to be where she came from. And as I would not want to be in her position, Father, I pray that she would no longer be in her position. She would change her, you would refashion her, you would recreate her and make her a new creature. So, Father, just bless her and be kind to her, be good to her, lead her, Lord, do miracles in her life. Give her a new place to live. Lord, give her more new food in her belly, a place to work. And, Father, if so be it, Lord, that you would give her a place to worship you as well. Be it here or anywhere else of your choosing, God. We would just want to see her in heaven holding a list of the names of the people that prayed for her and that loved her and cared for her. Lord, she reminds me of all of the people that are in Bethel Church now, both here and on the, online, and where we all came from. So, Father, love her like you did us and do for her what you did for us. Lord, open up our minds and our hearts to, as we study your word tonight. Bless the study of your word. Make it fruitful for your kingdom and your glory's sake, we pray in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. We've dealt with that, against powers, we've talked about that, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. We have done a lot on that, and so I'm moving on tonight. And then, number four, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Now, I want you to think about as we study this, I want you to think about the seat of government. The seat of government in Jefferson County. The seat of government of the state of Missouri is a high place. The seat of the federal government, Washington, D.C., is a high place. The seat of authority or um, the, the top levels of every corporation in America, every denomination in America, every large quote-unquote ministry, every big place where there is somebody or a group of people who sit in authority or pretended authority over a lot of people. As we study this, I want you to think about that because that is where the spiritual wickedness takes place. I am aware of facts that in large or in places where there is great power and authority, there is a lot of wickedness that goes on there. Would you agree with that? Things that are not meant for the public to see. Yet, they go on on a regular basis. Even in America, we, we, are, we want to think that the guys that we voted for are the good guys who do good things behind the scenes. And I think that in a lot of, the, of those places, 
Good things do not take place there. Bad, evil things, very wicked things take place there. Now up on the screen, these are, does anybody know what these are? Take a guess. Okay. All right, stainless be dismissed. That's good. They're mounds. As settlers started off in the east coast of America and started moving west, they started noticing that the former inhabitants of all of the lands of America, they built mounds. They built hills. Where there were none before, they built them. Um, let me get my pen out. Here on, right here, this is the Serpent Mound in Ohio. You can see why it's called that. Because not only is there this large artificial hill, but it culminates, it has a built into it, it has a serpent with its mouth open, and here is it's swallowing an egg or something like, something is either going in it or coming out of it. But the Native Americans were all mound builders. This is an artist's rendering of what the Cahokia mounds would have looked like 200, 300, 400 years ago because this is a level plain. It's the Missouri River bottom area, very fertile ground because it floods every now and then. And when it floods, it deposits a lot of good, rich minerals for things to grow. So farmers love this land. And as long as it doesn't flood on it, they can pretty, they can raise good crops there. But there was, it's flat and there was no hills there. And there was something in their religious activities that required them to build a mountain. An artificial hill. In some cases, they were pyramids. They were rough, artificial pyramids. This is what the Cahokia Mounds would have looked like two, three hundred years ago before white settlers came in. And in some cases, they leveled out the mounds, but in a lot of cases, they just left them there. But practically every Native American tribe had a high place to worship on. And on the top of these high places, rituals and ceremonies took place. In many cases, human Sacrifices were made. Human blood was spilled on these high places. This is the Great Pyramids of Giza in Egypt. And right here are the stars that make up the belt of the constellation of Orion. And it's been noted that these pyramids... And the way that they're positioned and their size matches perfectly the three stars in Orion's belt. Because it's a representation of as above, so below. This is what that representation is. Remember, the stars are the rulers of the darkness of this world. And so whoever built the pyramids in Egypt built these high places to match these three stars. Okay. This is the pyramid in, I call it chicken pizza, but it's Chichen Itza. But I want you to notice here on the bottom is a dragon or a serpent. It's called the serpent mound. There's a serpent here at the bottom and... It says here during the equinox, but I think that's wrong. I think it's during the solstices, June 21st and December 21st. When the sun hits the edges of this, of this side of the pyramid here, it makes a shadow of a serpent descending down from the skies 
And then when the time changes and at the other solstice, it looks like it's going back up to the heavens. But clearly on top of this pyramid, there were rituals performed. Sacrifices were performed and in many cases, those sacrifices were human sacrifices. This is the pyramid of the sun in Central America. This is a huge, huge step pyramid, Central America. Okay, how did they build this thing? In China, there were pyramids. Now, when you say China, you don't automatically think of pyramids. But in ancient times, somebody built pyramids in China. And the communist government of China tried to cover this up because you can see that they planted trees here, but you can see that all the trees are in rows. Telling you that these were not naturally occurring for some reason, the Chinese government wanted people to think that this was just a hill with trees on it out in the middle of nowhere. So they ordered trees to be planted on there to cover this up for whatever reason. Nobody knows. But you can clearly see that it was a pyramid. This is the Bosnian. This is a mountain in, Bos in Bosnia that they have found actually an entrance, an underground entrance into this, what some say is a naturally occurring hill, but it's not. This is an art, they, and what an artist thinks, if you took all the trees and layers of dirt off, this is what you're going to unco uncover underneath it. A large pyramid. It's actually larger than the one at Giza. Now, here's one underwater. How did it get there? Take a guess. Huh? Genesis chapter 7. At one time, it was above water. And God filled the earth with water and it sank and it stayed sunken. There are places. Here's a place off the coast of Japan where there is a pyramid type structure under water. Now, obviously, again, they did not build this under water. They built it above water. But at some point, God flooded everything. And some of these remain under water. Uh, nature, you can tell nature. Here's nature here. But here is the work of man. Building layers and levels of stones there. And of course, the symbol on the, on the seal of the United States of America is a high place. An artificial mountain, a man-made high place. And at the top, this is what spiritual wickedness in high places looks like. This is a symbol for spiritual wickedness in high places. So uh, we've already read Ephesians against spiritual. This is what we're wrestling against. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand the evil day and having done all. To stand. Let's go back in our Bibles. Turn to Numbers chapter 22. This is God telling Israel that when they go into the promised land, they're going to see high places. And God ordered, since they were man-made structures, God ordered the Israelites to tear them down. God said, I don't want my people learning their religion and worshiping their gods because their gods always required a high place. And if one wasn't there, they had to make one. But it always required a high place. Now, ask the question, when we, as Bible-believing Christians, come to worship God, do we have to have a high mountain or a high hill or a big plateau or do we have to get on top of the roof in order to really truly worship God? Huh? That's right. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. God does not require us 
to be on top of a hill, a mountain, a false high place, a man-made high place, or whatever. God does not require that out of us. We can worship God wherever we want to. Sister Pam, bless her heart, uh, injured her leg. But she was home worshiping God. And God was there with her. Am I right, Sister Pam? So what are you doing here? You actually brought a wonderful light and spirit here by coming back. You did. Okay? And, that, and it's not just because she's the super Christian of the church and we all follow her. Anytime anybody in this place is out for a while for illness, sickness, or whatever, when they come back, you just light the building up. We're family. We're brothers and sisters. We're friends. And when we get together, believe it or not, you make a difference with God's people. Can I hear God's people say amen? Numbers twenty two forty one. 41. It came to pass on the morrow that Balak took Balaam and brought him up into the high places of who? Baal. The word Baal means Lord. He was a principality deity. And this God required worship to take place at a high place. Most of the time, at the top of these high places, was a statue built to honor a certain god or a certain deity. The Bible calls them Baal or just flat out devils. Jeremiah seven thirty one, They have built the high places of Tophet, which is in the valley of the son of Hinnom, to burn their sons and their daughters in the fire, which I commanded them not, neither came it into my heart. Let me give you a little... Hebrew lesson. Very little Hebrew I know, but one of the words that I know is Gehenna. Have you ever heard that word before? Gehenna. What it means is the valley of Hinnom. And the valley of Hinnom was a, was a low place where they built a high place. It was a low area outside of Jerusalem and they built up an artificial hill there, a high place, a mound, a pyramid or whatever. They built it there to worship the god Baal there, Tophet. And they burnt their children on this high place. That's spiritual wickedness in high places. I'm going to write up here. Abortion clinics. Are high places. And spiritual wickedness. Takes place. In those buildings. Can I get, can I get an amen out of somebody? We had now. I want to say this. Okay. Abortion is murder. You killed a baby. Can God forgive you? Yes. We have a book. Is it ready? Alicia? We have a book. Written by a woman who followed our ministry. She had an abortion in her past. She wrote a book called, I Shall Go to Him. Where she gives her testimony of having an abortion, a forced abortion, but she had it. She now regrets it and wishes that she did not have that done. God can forgive that sin and will. Can I hear you say amen? He can and he will. But in the first place, 
it's murder and it's wrong okay devils love and demand human sacrifices they demand it I actually years ago was teaching this in Sunday school and I said let me get back to this uh, as too far back but I had mentioned the mounds at Cahokia and I said those old Indian tribes in many cases sacrificed humans and there was a woman who used an older woman her husband was Native American and she took huge offense to what I said how dare I accuse in her mind these innocent Native Americans because she said I have never heard of that happening hmm. and she said it in Sunday school publicly to deny what I had said publicly she argued with me claiming that it never happened and how dare I accuse any Native Americans past present or future of ever committing such a horrendous thing but they did and she left left angry that I had said that but it's true Okay, it's true. It happened. It happened in the land of Canaan. It happened in Illinois. It happened in Missouri. It happened in Mexico. It happened in Peru. It happened in Egypt. It happened everywhere, but it happened. Jeremiah 19.5, they have also, they built, they have built also the high places of Baal, to burn their sons with fire for burnt offerings unto Baal, which I commanded not, nor spake it, neither came it into my mind. God said, I never told you to do that. God's true religion does not require you to offer your son to honor the God. God offered his only son for us. That's the true religion. This is why I and God hate every false way. Because it requires you to try to please the God when our God says, I love you and I don't need you to kill yourself or your children for me. I will willingly give my son and my son will willingly lay down his life for you. That's why our religion and our faith is better than theirs. Can I get God's people to say amen? If you know my cell number, you text me, amen, and I'll know it. Second Chronicles chapter 11, turn there. God, God's telling us, he's warning us what takes place in high places. Give you, I'll tell you a little story. Do, who in here remembers the name, the DC Madam? Does that ring a bell with anybody? In Washington, DC, there was a woman who ran a escort service. Her clients were people in high positions, corporate and political. She had a book of names. I got an amen from David. She had a book of names and phone numbers. And... At some point, she must have hurt or went against somebody. Is my collar messed up here? Oh, okay. Sometimes my wife will go, and I'll go, okay, this is my collar. That's why I'm going. 
I'm not sure I'm following your cues here. Is my hair okay? But she must have, she must have made somebody mad. Because she had the names and phone numbers of people. And she said, if they ever come out against me and my company, I've got it set up to where I'll release the names and the phone numbers. Well, a prosecutor went after her, had a trial, and somebody interviewed her and asked her, what are you going to do about this trial? And she said, I'm not worried about it. I got another amen. That's from you, turkey. So anyway, she, they asked, the interviewer asked her, how are you doing with this? She said, I'm fine with it because if they find me guilty and they think that I'm going down alone, I'm not. I have a list of names and telephone numbers of very powerful people. In, I got another one. Okay. Hi, Ariel. Dickie Wayne, Ariel, Jeff, David. Amen. But anyway, and the guy asked her, how are you doing emotionally? You plan on committing suicide over this? She said, absolutely not. I'm going to see this through to the end. Well, they found her guilty. And then a few days later, they found her hanging in her mom and dad's shed. Suicide. I never believed it. One of the names, one of the phone numbers that she had was linked to a house owned by a former vice president of the United States of America. Now, he didn't live in that house. It was a house that they suspected was being used for various amenities given to corporations and or politicians and or heads of state that came to America. But her clientele was, she offered her services for biz, high ranking business people, high ranking politicians and so on. I believe it. I absolutely believe that in very high positions, very evil people do very evil things that are not seen by the public. If I were to say, Bill Clinton, would you believe it? If I were to say, Donald Trump, would you believe it? Now, just because I like some of the things he's doing does not mean that I don't think that he's, how can I say this? I believe that behind the scenes, he has done some very evil, wicked things. And used his position and his power and his money to hide them. Okay? Second Chronicles 11, verse 13. And the priests and the Levites that were in Israel, in all Israel, resorted to him out of all their coasts. For the Levites left their suburbs and their possessions and came to Judah and Jerusalem. For Jeroboam and his sons had cast them off from executing the priest's office unto the Lord. And he ordained him. This is Jeroboam. Jeroboam, remember, was a ser used to be a servant of King Solomon. Worked for Solomon. One of his lower down men. And God lifted him up basically from a slave status to being king over the ten northern tribes of Israel. And because Rehoboam, or Jeroboam wanted nothing to do with Rehoboam, who was the son of Solomon... And he said, we're not going down to Jerusalem to worship. We're going to build our own temple and have our own gods. And that's what they did. So he built a temple and put two golden calves in there. And he made, watch this, he ordained him priests for the high places and for the devils. And for the calves which he had made. So what is the Bible telling you? There exists in the high places of Governments, banks, large corporations, denominations, large ministries, large religious bases. Do you think 
The Muslim clerics are all holy, devout, pious men who commit no sins. No. Those men hold positions of high power over millions of people and they are just as crooked as a dog's back leg. You can count on it. Your Bible is telling you these things. This is what's going on. If I were to say Bilderberg, does anybody know what that is? Bilderberg. No, it's not a hamburger. Huh? So let me give you fact. There are meetings held by a group called the Bilderberg Group. They got their name from, they were meeting in a Bilderberg hotel. People who are high positioned people in politics, banking, business, health, industry, and media. Reporters. High, big name reporters. Not the little guy that has to get up at three in the morning to cover the early morning news, local news. We're talking major, major news agencies around the world. And they come and they meet and they discuss things and they say, do not tell what we talked about here. Don't say a word. That is a fact. Okay? Now, for me to guess about what they're saying in there, what they're doing, Ron, I have no idea. They didn't call me and invite me. I didn't get my, maybe it got lost in the mail. But I have not attended any of the latest Bilderberg meetings. But my Bible tells me that in those high places, there are very evil spirits there. How many of you can believe that one? I got another amen, I think. Joey, how you doing? So, Numbers 21, For there is a fire gone out of Heshbon, a flame from the city of Sion. It hath consumed Ar of Moab and the lords of the high places of Arnon. Lords of the high places. These are principalities. These are devils. These are spirits that dwell in high places. If Michael were here, I'd, every now and then I'll talk to Michael and I'll say, Michael, did some of your ancestors worship in the tops of hills or mountains? And he said, absolutely. To this day, some of the people that we're trying to minister to in Samburu and Turkana, especially in Turkana, some of the people in the outlying areas still believe that there are gods who dwell at Mount Kenya, Mount Turkana, uh, Mount Kilim Kilimanjaro. And these big mountains in Kenya the local people believe that there are gods who inhabit those mountains up there and live up there in their holy places and they don't go up there ever. Numbers 33. Turn there. Verse 50. The Lord spake unto Moses in the plains of Moab by Jordan near Jericho saying, Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, When you are passed over Jordan into the land of Canaan, then ye shall drive out all the inhabitants of the land from before you and destroy all their pictures and destroy all their molten images and quite pluck down what? All their high places. Why? Because if you believe this, and I believe it, I believe that at these high places, devils congregate and dwell there. Why? I don't know why. Why do animals pick certain places to live? Those of us who deer hunt, we know that at, let's say, let's say it's raining outside, raining pretty good. Sterling, where are all the deer going to be? Bedded down somewhere where? In the woods, more than likely, they'll find a cedar thicket or some sort of thicket area where there's a lot of brush and a lot of cover and they will bed down in there to get away from the rain. And we know that. That's their nature. We know that deer never climb trees, but we do. Deer don't know that. So when we climb trees, we have the advantage over the deer because we know that they stay down here. Now, turkeys are different. I never turkey hunt out of a tree because I know that more than likely I was walking to my deer stand one morning out by our house before daylight 
And 15 turkeys were all roosted in trees. And when I walked to them, they all left all at once. And it scared me to death. I stood frozen. Wondering what that was. And when it got real quiet, I took four more steps and ten more left. Then, later on as it got light, I could hear the turkeys calling one another to try to find out what, where they went so they could gather together again. That's their nature. Do you understand what I'm saying? Devils have a nature. They have realms that they live in. High places are their areas of preference. It's where they like to live. So, this is what God's saying. You shall quite, quite verse uh, 52 again, quite pluck down all their high places. You shall dispossess the inhabitants of the land. See how it's connected together? And dwell therein, for I have given you the land to possess it. God said, you're not only going to drive out the humans, but I want you to pluck down the high places so you can drive out the devils. So that where you live now, you won't be troubled by them. Needless to say, I hate politics. I hate, I hated going when we were part of a denomination. I hated going to the denominational meetings to see all the political jockeying that was done. People trying to get their agendas pushed through. People trying to make their voice to be heard. I hated that. When I was in one particular Bible college, and I'll just say it was in Oklahoma, Oklahoma was bad about it. And I hated it the political aspirations of preachers that I knew out there. They all, Ron, they all wanted to be the head of the denomination in the state of Oklahoma. They all wanted to have their voice. They all wanted their power, their control, their way. And I saw that as a young man and that, I said, I don't want anything to do with this. And I think God was keeping me out of that because I really believe that in those high places of authority, there can be the possibility of a lot of devils being in that spot, in that position. Men with power don't do so well, do they? Men with power. Power corrupts. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. So no matter what it is, if it's a high place, there's some bad things going on there. Deuteronomy 33. Happy art thou, O Israel, who is like unto thee, O people saved by the Lord, the shield of thy help, and who is the sword of thy excellency. And thine enemies shall be found liars unto thee, and thou shalt tread upon their high places. You see that? God said, I'm going to have you tread them and tread them down. Because once the high places are removed, the devils go with it. Does that make sense to everybody? There's a lot more here. I've got pictures. I love showing you pictures. There's a picture. That's a high place. That's a high place. You know what that is? It's the Vatican. What is that? You think, do you think that there is a habitation of devils on Capitol Hill. You think there is? Yeah, their name is Schumer and Pelosi and Clinton and... <laughs> hey, Amen! Uh, Feinstein, Frank Einstein. Frank Einstein. That's pretty good, isn't it? I love it when I make Chris laugh. But there's a lot of evil. There is a lot of evil in those places. Okay? We don't see it in the news. We don't get it from the news. When you read your Bible, you know what's going on behind the scenes. You know there's spiritual wickedness going on in the high places. So we'll talk about some, some more of that next Sunday night. All right, let's stand to our feet. I get another amen? There we go. I like my amens. Let's see, Dickie Wayne, Joey, Scott, how you doing, Scott? Jeff, 
Ariel, Steve, Jeremy, David. Amen. Don't, don't bother me. Listen, guys, that don't bother me at all. If you got my phone number, send me an amen every now and then. I like it. Um, pray, pray that maybe next Sunday night we'll kind of go into how to get rid of high places, if there's any around. Okay? Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Father, thank you for the family that you sent over here today for us to love. Father, have, I have no doubt, I have no doubt, but what you brought them over here. And Lord, they need help. And they reached out to us. And Father, help us to love them and help them get on their feet, get out of the, get, a, get away from the drugs, get away from the lifestyle that they've been part of. And becomes, Lord, this woman doesn't know the first thing about salvation and Jesus and God and the Bible. Lord, what a shame. She was brought up that way, but now She's in a place in her life where she has no other place to go. No choice. Now, Father, she's in her room right now. And I pray, Heavenly Father, God, that while she's there, you deal with her. Break the cycle of trouble that she's been in. Help her. Bring her out of the pit like you did us. It would be a miracle, God, but you can do it. But Father, we just thank you, God, that you brought somebody our way that at least for one day they would know that somebody loved them and somebody cared about them. Lord, that's an honor and a privilege for us to serve you that way. Thank you, God, for allowing us to do that. Bless each and every person here. Bless the people online. I love them. I pray, God, that you give them grace, and I thank you, Lord, for them. And Lord, just use this church. It's what all I ask is that you use this place how you want to, but you do it. That way you, we can praise you and thank you and honor you and glorify you. Father, bless your word tonight. Show us, God, how to tread down the high places. Show us that in your word, God. Teach us some great and mighty things. We pray in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen.